Hello and welcome to News Click. Today, we have with us the Raghunandan from Delhi Science Forum to discuss with us the possible repercussions of the atomic power plant that the Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited and Haryana Power Generation Committee are setting up in Gorakhpur, Hisar. Hello, sir. The centre approved this project in October 2009 and farmers, activists and citizens have been protesting since August 2010. It's 2013 now. At what stage of construction is the plant now and how fruitful have these protests been? Well, as far as construction is concerned, nothing has started so far. But uh, all clearances seem to have been done uh, and the government is ready to start construction, but they are waiting for things to settle down uh, in some sense. What has happened, however, is that post Fukushima, the tempo of the protests have sharply increased. Basically because till Fukushima, I think the protest in among the villagers in the area was largely confined to those villages where uh, complete removal of civilian population had been ordered and where displacement was the major issue. But villagers in surrounding areas and in surrounding villages have become ext extremely concerned since Fukushima because they have seen that the impact of a disaster is not confined only to a few kilometers around the plant but can spread much farther uh, down. So that's where things stand uh, at the moment and I think the government is waiting A on investment B on the protests to die down uh, to a physically start uh, major construction work. Soon after the Fukushima disaster, the government of India claimed that such an accident could never happen in our country. How convinced are you of this assurance? See, it's not just me. Uh, nobody can be convinced of any argument uh, which says that such accidents cannot happen. Uh, in fact, Fukushima is the prime example to show that accidents which are not envisaged can happen. Uh, that's in fact exactly what Fukushima did show, that you couldn't envisage an accident of that uh, nature, but it took place, which is why today extraordinary measures are required in order to take the public into confidence and to give the public a confidence that all necessary precautions are being taken uh, to meet any eventuality. I don't think the uh, Atomic Energy Regulatory Board in India, the Government of India, the Nuclear Power Corporation has taken such measures which will inspire this degree of confidence. When it comes to this plant in Gorakhpur, NPCIL claims that it's a green project with zero emission and absolutely no health hazards from radiation. What are the major issues of concern that deem this project a not so green one? Well, this is a uh, question which is you could address as much to this plant as to any other nuclear plant. The argument that nuclear energy is green uh, has been advanced for a long time and continues to be advanced today that nuclear energy is in some sense an answer to the issue of emissions and global warming because it can give you a substitute for fossil fuels. There are several arguments against this. Of course, in the running of the plant, there are no emissions. But the, in the construction of the plant, uh, if you take the life cycle of the plant, during the construction, there are large number of emissions involved due to the huge amounts of steel and concrete used. And uh, if there is an accident, then the entombment of the plant, as has taken place in Chernobyl, as has taken place in Fukushima, also involves huge amounts of concrete and uh, steel, which again involve emissions. So over the life cycle of the plant, it's not zero emissions uh, at all. There are emissions uh, involved, but there are no carbon dioxide emissions during the running uh, of the plant. Green is a terminology which I would hesitate to use uh, in plants of this uh, nature 
whether it is environment friendly or not in the given circumstances is something that one can debate. This pressurized heavy water reactor, once built, will need huge quantities of water for steam generation and cooling purposes. The government of Haryana for this has assured about 320 cusecs of water supply from the Bakra Canal. How will this in turn affect the irrigation and the agricultural output of the area? To me, this is one of the biggest concerns about the Gorakhpur plant and why even today I am surprised that a comprehensive environment impact assessment uh, has not uh, thrown up red flags in this uh, regard because as you said there's a huge amount of water requirement and the entire water requirement for this project is to come from this one irrigation uh, canal. Now as we know an irrigation canal does not carry huge quantities of uh, water and if you take away a regular supply of 320 cusecs from the irrigation canal, it is clearly going to deprive the local agricultural community of that amount of water which they would otherwise use for uh, irrigation. And if you put that water back, it will be going in at much higher temperatures with volumes of water in the irrigation canal not being such that they will dilute this increase of temperature very quickly as would happen in offshore installations where you discharge uh, water warm sea. water into the sea. So it will have an impact on irrigation, particularly during lean season, when water flows in the irrigation canal will come down, but you will still require a regular offtake of the same quantity of water for running the plant. So I'm sure it is going to have an impact on uh, farming in the area. Moreover, in the case of a nuclear accident, will this water supply assured from the government of Haryana be enough to dilute the radioactive heavy water? That's an even bigger concern uh, for me. One is whether or not an irrigation canal is itself sufficient for normal running of a uh, power plant of this kind. And secondly, if there is a runaway uh, reaction uh, as happened in uh, Fukushima, then what we saw in Fukushima is that you'll have to draw on the seawater to uh, cool the system uh, down. Here you have no reservoir of water except the canal itself and if you've emptied out the waters in the canal that's it there's nothing further that you can do with regard to cooling of water there is no alternative source of water and in fact even in past uh, occurrences uh, of accidents in India like in uh, Rajasthan in the Rawad Bhatta uh, reactor you've had problems of this nature in inland uh, power plants where there is inadequacy of water uh, in the area and if you are totally reliant only on an irrigation canal, I think that's a very dangerous situation. As you said earlier, the Ministry of Environment and Forests has given this project a green signal. There are other concerns regarding violating the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board's regulation in terms of siting, population density and sterile zone. How important are these concerns? See, I think these concerns are extremely important and unfortunately uh, there is the usual uh, shroud of secrecy around anything nuclear due to which we don't know, even know what kind of answers the authorities have uh, come to. The environmental impact assessment to the best of my knowledge has not been 100% completed by an independent agency as is required and in any case it's not in the public domain, so we have no idea what factors have been taken into consideration, what has been considered as favorable, not favorable, etc. In terms of siting, I would think even by the AERB's own criteria, there are many factors which would uh, go against the siting of this plant in this area. You are extremely, the plant is located extremely close to high density population uh, areas. There is Hisar itself, which is a very large uh, town. There is Gorakhpur, which is also not small, with populations of over 30,000 uh, in the immediate vicinity and its uh, environs. 
very narrowly, if you look at it within a 1.5 kilometer exclusion zone, you can extern the population and put them outside. But in the next zone, up to about 5 odd kilometers, the density of population is still quite heavy. And if I were to have chosen a siting uh, criteria, I would have first said, look for alternative sites. There would be better sites with less population density in the area to look for, given the adverse situation with regard to water, given the high population density of the area, I would have thought that there would be better sites available than this one. These officials from NPCIL and HPGC, have they explored other options other than Gorakhpur? See, I think in the beginning they looked for possible sites in Haryana. They seem to have selected this one mainly due to the proximity of the um, uh, irrigation canal. There are also thermal projects uh, coming up in the region and they have uh, just plumped for the site. I don't know whether in the history of the atomic energy installations in this country, there has ever been a very rigorous process of starting with, let's say, eight or ten sites and then examining uh, comparative feasibility and then weighing pros and cons and then deciding on one. I don't think that's ever been done and I don't think that was the practice in this one either. By whatever criterion that they have selected, which as always have remained uh, opaque uh, to the general public or to experts outside, they have selected Gorakhpur and all you can now say is yes or no. On a more broader note, given the large costs involved in setting up a nuclear plant and the environmental issues that are being raised, is this risk worth taking? See, that's the million dollar question uh, today. Uh, I and the Delhi Science Forum happen to take the position not that we are in principle against nuclear energy. There are several organizations which have today come to that conclusion that in principle nuclear energy should be uh, ruled out. We think the last word has not been spoken on the subject of nuclear energy. However, Nuclear energy is one technology where the more we learn, the more time advances, the more familiar we get with the technology, the more we appreciate the risks involved and therefore, in order to counter those risks, the more costs are incurred. This is one of the few technologies which have got more expensive as time has progressed rather than less expensive. And today, after Fukushima, the concept of taking care of accidents beyond design uh, considerations. That is, accidents which are not envisaged at the time of designing uh, the plant. Today, in, internationally, regulatory agencies want that precautions should be built in to take care of accidents which are unanticipated. That will impose huge costs, uh, as the experience in Fukushima uh, has shown. And if those costs are built in to the total cost of the nuclear power plant, you will find that the costs exceed not only those of conventional coal power generation, but even of the most expensive solar uh, installations, the costs will be much higher with nuclear. So the question to be asked is, uh, is it worth spending so much money at such high risk on a source of energy which has these problems when if you wanted to spend that much money, you could invest fairly high amounts of money in solar energy or in wind power and also generate uh, electricity without these risks. Exactly. So that is really the question to be asked on the other way. What is it so great about nuclear energy as to demand such high investment and such high risks? My answer therefore to that would be until we understand the risks better until costs come down and that is not going to happen unless there are far more transparent, open, honest scientific evaluations and taking the public into confidence about nuclear energy. I don't think it is wise to spend a lot of money where there are so many unknowns involved when if if you are actually prepared to spend more money, there are other alternatives available in the non-conventional energy sphere. 
So the major concern is that the government of India and NPCIL are both this casual and naive in their approach to nuclear energy. Well, yes. Uh, they would, of course, if you ask them, they would say, look, it's not as if we don't appreciate the risks. But I think what is what we are witnessing today is, for one reason or another, a political commitment to go ahead with nuclear energy, be it domestic uh, technology or imported uh, technology, regardless of costs. Uh, I don't think that's a course of action that India should be uh, embarking on. All sources of energy should be evaluated dispassionately clearly taking into account costs, risks, potential advantages and benefits, and then you choose which is the most suitable. And I think a dispassionate analysis would put nuclear energy at the bottom of this list. I totally agree. Thank you, sir. I thank you, sir.